All right, so I've got one layer that I have rasterized and started to cut things out from. But what if I want this to be a little bit smaller? I can go up to Edit and Free Transform. On Safari, this shortcut doesn't seem to work all that great. So we're just going to go to the drop down. So Edit, Free Transform. We get a box just like when we brought it in that allows me to scale it but I want to rotate it. In fact, I like my cartoon jumbles not to have any sense of orientation. So I don't want there to be an up or a down. This is like wadding up different stuff and throwing it in the trash. So I'm going to turn it upside down. And then if I hold down shift, I can distort it. I can squeeze it one way or the other. I still want it to be recognizable as a cat. I kind of like the tiger stripes. The other thing I can do is I can right click within the transform box and these are the really fun options, right? I can flip it vertically, horizontally, all these different ways on an axis. I can also uh, distort it, put it in perspective, skew it, but my favorite one is warp. We're going to be using this a lot, especially on the next exercise because you can also do this to vector shapes. But with warp, it cuts my image the pixels of my image, both the white pixels and the black pixels, even though I don't see the white under multiply, and it puts it on this nine square grid, which incidentally is the grid we're going to use for our storyboards when it comes time to animate. So we're going to get comfortable with this format. Each place the grid line is, is a place that I can stretch. So it's like on chicken wire, but flattened out, and I can compress it or stretch it it takes a little bit of practice to actually grab it correctly. It has anchor points with Bezier handles, even though it's not a vector. It uses that, those same kind of techniques. You right click in the box. And then this one is called warp. So if you just don't like the angle of something, you can rotate it, you can distort it, but you can also warp it both internally and externally. Like I can make his head small and his body big. This is a fantastic tool with simple assets like line art. And then I hit return. It's all conditional. It's all temporary until you hit return. And then what I always do, look at your history, which is up at the top. You can toggle between and you can see what your transform did. So it started this way and then I transformed it this way. And maybe I actually like that one better. <laughs> and you can always do Command Z to undo and go a step back in your history too. Okay, so that one's done. Now this one, I like its position, but I want to get rid of those little eyeballs. So I try to delete and it tells me, oh, I need to rasterize it first. So I right click the layer, I rasterize it, then I can delete. Just use my lasso, delete. Maybe I only want one part of this. Maybe I want to delete all of that. Okay, why not? And then I can clean this up a little bit. Again, we're not trying to be perfectionists on our exercises. We're just getting introduced. Okay, the bigger problem is this is a blue line and I want it to be a black line. So I am going to go to image just like we did for image size and just like we did for edit and free transform and this time I'm gonna go to adjustments. Be careful because image also has transform options. But the image transform options are set in stone. This is just for like hard rotations. So you don't usually use those much. Instead, you want to go to edit and free transform for the full transformation tools. But image has adjustments. And these are called direct adjustments. And we're going to use three of them. We're going to use levels, hue, saturation, and color balance in the class. For this, I really only need levels. It's the most basic. This is basically brightness and contrast. And to make blue lines black, what I need to do is take this slider and just move it all the way over to the right side. And then I can play with the others and get them out of the way. But basically, I'm just cleaning it up, moving it all the way to black. And then I say, OK. So now what was a blue line is now a black line. The danger of that is it can leave little remnants 
but that's going to be okay by the end. And I'll show you how we clean it all up at the end. But that works for now. Let me undo that and show you another way that's a little bit more elegant, but a little bit more advanced, I guess, within these tools, but it's easy to do. So instead of doing a direct adjustment, which changes those pixels under image adjustment, I can double click on the layer, but I double click outside of the type of the layer because I don't want to rename the layer. Instead, I want to bring up this screen, which is called the layer style. And with the layer style, you can do something which is color overlay, which is to replace every pixel in that layer with one pixel color. And if I do that, this is what I get. Why do I get that? Because that layer has white pixels in it as well as blue pixels. But what's nice about layer styles is they can be turned on and off. They're on top of the layer. They're like an attribute of the layer. They're not directly changing the pixels. So without having to select all the white in this layer, which we'll learn how to do, but we're taking things slowly, and deleting all the white, and then turning on the effect, which will turn it black in a way that doesn't have any distortion. I can just use direct adjustments as well. So I'll show you that with my other blue line. So how can I turn this? Well, first I'm going to rasterize it. And I can transform it. I can rotate it. I can delete. I can warp it. Only got a few more minutes. Oh, I like that. It's like the cat's very upset. All right, now I can go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I'm just going to darken the darks and brighten the lights until those darks are all the way black. And say OK. And if I want to delete anything from it, I'll use my lasso. Let's see, I don't need this necessarily. I don't need the eyes. Okay, now I can get a sense of how these things are layering up. And at any time I can move them using the top tool, the move tool, as long as I select the layer. Then I can move that asset wherever I want it. And whenever I want to rotate it, I can do that. So I'm going to kind of line up that curve with that curve that tail with that tail, but maybe I want to stretch it out a little. So I go to image, or I'm sorry, I go to edit and free transform. And I, I can only affect the layer that I'm selected. And then I'm going to line up their tails as well. Kind of push it in these different directions. And maybe get the head a little bit free of the others. Then hit return. Next one. This is the one with the watermark. So it's not the same as turning blue to black, but it's the same kind of tool that's going to help. I go to image, I go to adjustments, I go to levels. So just levels for this. And all I have to do is move that black slider a little bit, and it will get rid of this watermark. Right? If it's a gray watermark on white, or if the white's not white enough, then I use the white slider and move it in towards the middle, and that will brighten the white. And I have that, I think, on the next one. So this one, which is from Redbubble, you see how the white's not quite white. So if I go to Image Adjustments, i got to make sure I rasterize it first. Go to Levels. I'm going to brighten the whites. And lo and behold, it disappears. And then if I'm worried I'm brightening it too much and I'm sacrificing some of my, my black, I can always darken the blacks. So levels is fantastic because it gives you control of the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones instead of just brightness contrast. Until you get kind of the clean lines you want where the whites are cleanly white. Because look at the difference between this and what it was before. That's through image adjustment levels. It's called the levels adjustment. All right, and then of course, I can play with erasing from these and reorganizing them. But I have only a few seconds left for today, so I'm going to rasterize this one and do a quick transformation, edit, free transform. I'm going to flip it. 
flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to try one I haven't tried, which is distort, which is where you just tug it at different corners. And it kind of relates to perspective, but perspective will lock a horizon line in when you do it. You just try this in different ways. And then maybe I'll flip it again by right clicking. And then I'll turn on some of these others. And I like these so far. There's some nice energy maybe in there. But as long as they're separate layers, I can play with them. I'm not so fond of this one. This one just kind of overpowers everything. So what might I do? I'm going to select that layer, and I'm just going to delete a lot from it, like kind of arbitrarily, just so there's little remnants of it. I went over. So we say File. You always say Save as PSD because that will give you the option to rename it. You always want Save As. I've already named it. That's the name I want. I leave it there. It's going to go always to the desktop. I hit Save. You want to make sure you see it on the desktop. And then what I do is right click and make it green. And then I'm going to move it into my folder. And if there's another file with that name in my folder, it's going to be an older file. And so it's going to ask if I want to replace it with the newer one. And I'm going to say yes. And so there it is. And then I can close this. And then.